So hello and welcome to the next tutorial. I'm trying to explain an advanced self-made block for a machine block. The idea is that this block includes failure. So we are including the availability of a machine and when it is not available due to a failure, um, then we have modeled downtime and uh, the machine is repaired. And once the failure is fixed, um, production can be processed. Here, um, I just want immediately jump to the simulation model. So let me switch the cam. So here we can see already the Java applet. Um, you can see here four station in sequence. If you have a closer look to the other tutorials, you also find the same model um, for the explanation of an implementation of Convip. So the work ahead window and uh, VipCap are introduced. But for this tutorial, we are focusing only on the stations and the life um, within the stations. You can see that all stations have an own parameter set, so we can define the buffer size within the station. We can um, define the resource capacity, um, which is um, how many items can be processed at a specific point in time. That means right now um, the resource capacity is one. That means only one item per time is allowed to enter the processing station. You can configure it, the processing times, um, the station availability, and which is important um, is the mean time to repair for um, the failure modeling. We can configure it, all those stations um, by own parameter set. Um, in general, an A an station is the an, a chan an, an agent, and so we can um, link um, to this agent station um, their own parameter set. So now we can go into more detail of the model itself. So we can see here on the left hand side that I've generated a um, station block. So let me open that. Then we can immediately go to this station. And you can see again, this is the visualization of the agent. Um, we can see here the um, queue, um, which is the buffer in front of the machine. Um, we can see the visualization of the processing itself, and we can see some key performance indicators. And this is the inside logic. So when an agent arrives, um, the agent goes into the buffer queue and the agent has to wait until this restricted area um, allows an agent to enter. Restricted area is a combination of two blocks, um, which has a restricted area start block and the restricted area end block. And if you go to the start block, we can now link the resource capacity. So please keep in mind the resource capacity was um, defined um, by one. So that means one agent is allowed to enter this restricted area. And within this restricted area, the processing takes place and if necessary, the repair. So the repair only takes place um, if a failure occurs. And now the interesting part is, how does that happen in more detail? So that means in the beginning, we are using a function. This function time to failure start occurs once in the beginning of the simulation. And we are just um, calling the function TTF calculation. So let me switch to the function TTF calculation. We can see we have no arguments there and uh, we just have a return value in this function. And in the beginning, we are just returning an exponential distributed time to failure. So that means at time zero, the time to failure is defined. 
So in our example, um, let us assume us we have a time to failure 100. And what is happening next? An order enters the processing station. Once the order is finished, we can see that um, we have um, calculated the processing time in timestamp two. So timestamp two um, includes or represents the processing time. So now when the processing is done, we deduct the processing time of this specific order from the time to failure. So assume the processing time is 10 time units. So we deduct from the 100 the 10. And then we have a time to failure of 90 left. Um, then um, an if statement um, um, is asked. Um, is the time to failure um, zero or less than zero? No, it's not. So that means the time to repair is zero. So the time to repair, which is then defined here. Yeah? So we could also um, include that as an attribute of our agent. But now we have here a global uh, variable defined. So the time to failure is then the um, delay time in the repair. So we do not have a failure. So that time to repair is zero. So now assume um, we get another order and right? the processing time is 100. Then again, the 90 minus the 100 is minus 10. And now we have a failure because it's less than zero. So what is happening here is um, that we change um, the color to red so that um, it is indicated in the main agent that you can immediately see that a failure is happening. But more important is that we now um, take an exponential distributed time to repair because the time to failure is uh, now below zero. So we calculate an exponential distributed time to repair. And now we have a time to repair. So once, once the agent moves to the next block, to the repair delay block, it is now delayed. And what we need to do now is we need a new time to failure. So we trigger the function time to failure and we add it um, to the minus 10. So if the new calculation is not 200, then the new time to failure is minus 10 plus 200 is 119. And then the procedure starts again. Of course, there are some assumptions in this model. Yeah? So um, the processing has to be done first and then the maintenance happens. Yeah? So it is not possible um, in this example. Of course, you can model that if you um, are interested in it, um, that the process stops when time to failure um, gets zero. That's also the reason why in our case, the time to failure um, has the possibility to go below zero. So this is one of the assumptions. And perhaps what I also would like to show um, to you is um, um, the possibility to calculate uh, the processing time beforehand. So we are calculating the processing time when an agent arrives at the buffer and we have two options. So we have a variable, or in that case, it's a parameter, um, is a Boolean parameter, um, which can be true or false. And you can uh, define here the stochastic influence of the processing time. So if that parameter is true, so is the Brock time stochastic? Yes then please draw a random um, exponential distributed processing time. And then we store that in time in the attribute timestamp of the individual agent. If it is deterministic, then we store the deterministic processing time in timestamp two. And what is interesting now is we have, um, defined um, the parameter here 
Um, so you, you can see here now uh, the linkage of uh, those parameters to um, the station block one. And we can see um, also um, the parameter um, proc time stochastic that is ticked. So it's true. So you can also click here um, to the value editor. Let me go in here. And then we can see it's indeed true. And you can, of course, um, define that differently for um, your stations. Yeah? So we can tick that off. Then it means um, it is a deterministic uh, processing time used for station two. So thank you so much for listening to the machine block with maintenance, repair, time to failure. Good luck with modeling.